How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle, and today I'm pretty excited because we're going to be talking about Creep Show Issue One. Yeah, c can you believe that? In my hands, I actually have a real Creep Show comic. This is, of course, kind of a spin off of the AMC show. We had the original trilogy of movies. And then after that, we finally got Creep Show, the TV show, coming to Shudder. And because of the TV show, we're getting Image Comics putting out an actual comic book. Now, we've seen uh, tie-ins to movies and TV shows and comics, like, all the time. And they're usually okay and provide you a bit more of the story. But Creep Show being a comic is so much more than a TV show tie-in. Uh, Creep Show, for those of you guys who don't know, whenever they did a segment, either in the movies or in the TV show, they always acted like it was from a comic book. Creep Show in the movie was a fictional comic book that all these stories were supposed to come out of, kind of like Tales from the Crypt or Creepy Magazine, and in turn, it had that fun old school comic book horror behind it. And I always thought it would be cool if there was an actual Creep Show comic book. We did have the adaptation of the first movie, but I really wished that, you know, you could go out to the comic book shop and see this sitting on the shelf. And I actually, I didn't know this was coming out. I went to my local comic book shop. I was looking through the new releases of this week. And I saw an actual Creep Show comic sitting on the shelf. That was such a good but kind of surreal experience to actually see a real Creep Show comic. And that's really cool. But on top of all that, it's actually a really good comic too. It's not just a lazy tie in. You're getting really, really fun stories here. Uh, the Creep Show motto Creep Show. The most fun you'll ever have being scared? And yeah, that's right. You know, the stories aren't, you know, super big and heavy. And if you're familiar with anthology horror tropes, you'll probably guess a little bit about where they're going. But they're all fun, you know? It, they're... <laughs> There's just sort of this gleeful, dark comedy about them, and I did find myself smiling when I was reading them. They just go to, to such extremes and absurdities, and, and you can tell this is the book that you wrote with the idea of the most fun you'll have being scared. It's really cool. We get two stories in this one. I guess, you know, the TV show did two stories each episode, so... Uh, for the most part. So yeah, two stories in here makes sense. Uh, the first one, Take One, is a Halloween story, which is always cool. Start off right off the bat giving us a Halloween story, plus October is next month, so it's kind of timely there. Anyway, we start off with a Halloween story. These kids are trick-or-treating. They see a house that's supposed to be abandoned, but there's a bowl of candy there and it says, take one. And two of the older kids are bullies and they really do write teenage jerks very accurately in this book. But they decide to take all the candy for themselves. And of course, the people in that house that are supposed to be dead, maybe not 100% dead, you know? So a good, fun Halloween story to start out with. And then after that, uh, you get this story where there's a, uh, a mom that needs a costume entertainer for her child's birthday party, and she finds a mysterious advertisement for one, and since it's last minute and she can't get anybody else, she calls this one, and it's this weird guy in a big purple fuzzy suit, but maybe it's not really a suit. Maybe she actually called a monster to be a children's entertainer. And you know those videos of like the mascot costumes that can eat people? Yeah, this one gets really wacky and really cartoony. It does have an actual meaning, 
when they talk about how like the parents are divorced and they're totally missing the uh, the bigger issues when they fight with each other and how that affects the kid. There's some real psychology going on here, but it's also a fun monster just terrorizing a kid's birthday party. Really, really hilarious, and I loved both these stories. Like I said, the most fun you'll ever have being scared was their motto, and you can really see them trying to swing for that. Now, if you guys want to see this comic in a little bit more detail, I'm going to switch to the close-up camera. I'll show you guys a bit of the story and a bit of the art. I won't be doing any major spoilers, but if you want to take a closer look, we're going to switch to the close-up camera now. Alright, here we are inside the castle taking a closer look at Creepshow Issue 1. Bring it close to the camera, we see the iconic red band across the top. And the image down here is the Crypt, uh, not the Crypt Keeper, the Creepshow Ghoul, um, reading a Creepshow comic inside of an open grave. Um, yeah, it's the first issue, so rather than a picture from the story, we gotta have the ghoul on the front there. And if we look at this information on the top, we get the GN, which I believe is uh, Greg and Nicotero. I think they had that on there uh, in the show because there wasn't actually any uh, production, you know, any uh, comic company, so they put that on there. But now in real life, we have Image and Skybound here, and I guess I want to say, you know, it does make sense that Image put this out. Uh, Image made Walking Dead, AMC is the channel that Walking Dead would air on, uh, and then the Creep Show show uh, came out on Shudder, which is essentially part of AMC, so it makes sense that Image would do this book as well. Uh, we get, you know, the Tales of Suspense and Horror, Issue number one and uh, 3 dollars which is a, a pretty standard modern comic price. Uh, flip it to the back and we see that it's got a custom back. A feast for your famished eyes and then the ghoul here. And then the information again. And we can see this is the uh, the main cover. There are actually a tons of variants because it's a issue one. And if we open up, here are the credits and we get the ghoul there as well. Uh, September issue, volume one, number one. So yeah, this is going to be a run of, I believe, five, issue, uh, five issues. So if they get another run of comics, I'll change to volume two. So hopefully we get at least six and we get to see that one change. Uh, but anyway, Take One and Shingo are the stories. And we see that Take One, the art and the writer is the same person, Chris Burnham. And Shingo, we actually have two writers, Paul Dini and Stephen Langford. And the art is uh, Joe McCara, I mean, John McCrea. Uh, but yeah, Paul Dini, uh, Paul Dini actually wrote on the Creepshow TV show before. Also, Batman the Animated Series, so really cool to see him over here. And after that, we get the stories, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about the stories. I'm not going to do any major spoilers, uh, so I'm going to cut it off before the ending, and I won't, you know, I won't spoil them for you guys. But let's see a little bit of the setups, and let's look at the art. Now, first off, we have the creep show ghoul peeking in, and he's going to be introducing the story. And that's one thing that I, you know, I kind of like is... In the fake comics within Creepshow, the ghoul always talked in the comics, even though he never really talked in the actual show. He was mostly silent in live action, but whenever they showed a comic panel, they always showed him talking, so he does talk here. And the title, Take One, is written on the sign, and we get a group of kids, the, uh, Mummy Boy is the nice one, but the Hot Dog and the Back to the Future Kid are, are bullies. And they see that it's got full-size bars. And a lot of these you can't make out, but you see Power Trio, like Three Musketeers. Uh, but, of course, they're like, that's full-size bars. We gotta take them all. And the kid even goes, ah, oh, gee, I don't know, guys. Uh, but anyway, they start to talk. The kid says... 
I heard that this guy shot, shot this other kid for trespassing on his property, like he crashed his bike or something, and the guy shot at him, and then we get this other kid kind of debunking that. He says, no, that kid died some other way, and this guy's not even alive anymore. Uh, his daughter shot him in the head, and the legend says that they buried him in his bathrobe, and then the hot dog guy says, you have to take at least two. It says take one, but we're going to make you take at least two. And, you know, you get kind of the creep show ghoul um, mocks the kid a little bit. He, he kind of gets into the story a little bit, but he reaches to take one, and the mummy boy goes, I'm not scared, and he goes... If he's just pretending and he really isn't scared, he deserves an Oscar, like like Oscar, you know. So there are a few more of these jokes that come later on, you know, talking about the weight of the guilt in the candy bucket and stuff. But anyway, uh, they do take the whole bowl of candy and they go about their uh, the rest of their trick-or-treating and the kids will be really really mean, you know, and that's one thing I do like is they don't really hold back on these two other kids being really, really cruel, and really that is a lot how, a lot how some mean teenagers act, but anyway, he doesn't, um, he doesn't like that he was forced to take more than one, so he eats the other candy bar to get rid of the evidence, but he looks over and he sees the ghost of the old man in his bathrobe like the legend, but with his head split open. And I really do like, that's a cool monster design, you know, this old man. But where you can see, like, the gunshot split his head open, that's pretty cool. And, of course, he starts to run away there. And I'll cut it off before we see if the night goes okay for them or not. Uh, anyway... After that, we get the story Shingo, and we see Shingo is ridden out in the uh, sidewalk here, a very extreme angle, and we get the creep show ghoul with a birthday present there, and we see that this mom is upset because her ex-husband was supposed to take care of a entertainer for their daughter's birthday party, and he didn't, and it's last minute, and no one is going to be able to give them an entertainer. However, she hears a knock at the door, looks down and sees a card, and goes, Well, hey, I can at least get something. And we see Shingo, this big, weird, animal costume figure, dancing around in entertaining the kids, you know, and he has this, you know, goofy talk. Hello, everybody's me, Shingo. So, yeah, goofy character there. And the, uh, yeah, the uh, the moms are talking, and the they're like, yeah, he's a uh, weird, but he was uh, available at the last minute, and he was really cheap. He said he didn't want any mo any money. He just wanted food. Which, uh, we, knowing this is a horror story, wonder what he meant by food. And if we turn the page, we get, uh, the kids talking about, uh, you get the, uh, red-headed daughter there and her friend. And they're arguing, like, is Shingo from a, a book or a movie? And the friend is like, I bet he's a Pokemon. He looks like a Pokemon. And they find the only thing about a Shingo character is an obscure reference that uh, there was a demon named Shingo. And this kid that he picked up, well, that kid's gone now. And then we get this ominous, has anyone seen my sister? Not to worry, burp. You see her soon, you know, so yeah, Shingo is going to start wreaking havoc on this kid's birthday, and it does get really fun, and I, I won't spoil it, I won't go any farther, but I really do like it, what the kids wind up doing, I do like the ending of this book, a uh, really good, funny, you know, it's like, okay, we can't just have the kids, 
you know, it, it, you got to come up with some sort of crazy ending, and it does have a pretty crazy ending. I want to show you guys one uh, more thing towards the back is we do have this uh, letters page, and it's going to be like, you know, you can send your letters here, but since it's the first issue, they actually have this really nice letter from Greg Nicotero, and he talks about how happy he is that Creep Show is an actual comic book you can get on the newsstands now and he feels like it's a way to you know pay it forward to horror fans and overall a really nice letter from Nicotero and then after that we do get a uh, sneak peek at uh, the issue coming out October 26 and we see this guy he's uh, getting electrocuted and he's holding a phone that's at a full charge now so I am curious, uh, the Gamora tree and creator's rights. So I'm curious where that one is going. But overall, two very, very just enjoyable stories. You know, like I said, really good, over-the-top, intense, dumb fun. And you can kind of, if you know Anthology Horror, you can see the base framework for each story. You know, like the Halloween story. A lot of it we know where it's going, you know, and, and you know, the thing is, though, it's, yeah, it is kind of predictable, it is kind of standard anthology horror, but you know what, it, it's not the story structure, it's the atmosphere, and it does, in each story, just have this great, over-the-top sense of atmosphere, it's just a bunch of maniacal fun, you know, and the little digs and puns that the creep show ghoul gets in there as well. Yeah, it's just really cool, and I, I'm really looking forward to the next issue. So overall, definitely recommend it. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll put a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my creep show playlist. I've talked about every episode of the first two seasons, plus the animated special and the holiday special. So if you want to see me talk more about creep show, you can find that there. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Creep show playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.